Hi everybody, I'm Ernestine Lyons and this is part two of African American Vernacular English. And in part one, we actually went over um, a lot of different things that, you know, really explained why African American Vernacular English um, does what it does grammatically. And, you know, so in a review of that, we essentially talked about um, deletion of a verb, copula, and deletion of the verb to be, um, omission of verbs, and then the habitual aspect marker, and then the negative concord. So today I'm actually just going to talk a little bit more about, so today I'm actually going to talk a little bit more about this book um, and some examples that are in here. And this is actually Talking and Testifying by Geneva Smitherman. And, you know, this is the language of Black America. And this is actually one of the first books I ever saw um, on African American vernacular English from a linguistic perspective. So, um, you know, I just kind of wanted to go over some of the things that she talks about in here. Um, you know, for example, she mentions that a lot of um, African American vernacular English borrows from uh, West African languages. And, you know, then she always, she kind of uses a lot of examples, um, um, for example, of how, you know, African American vernacular English um, kind of borrows the same sort of ways of uh, long vowel, two parts, and uh, con no consonant pairs. Um, for example, this book, it actually, um, because it was, it was published in, I want to say, I'm going to look for sure, the was actually given to me by my linguistics professor, Martha Ratliff, published originally in 1969 and then again in 1977. So a lot of it kind of has slang and things that, you know, essentially were slang phrases in the 1970s, like um, get down and, um, but now I think that actually, some of these phrases are a part of African American um, sort of, um, you know, just the lexicon of the language and, you know, how the um, pigeons and creoles kind of evolved. We still say things like throw down, but it's not necessarily like a part of the linguistic aspects of how African American vernacular English evolved. It's more, you know, colloquialisms. Every language and, you know, even languages that are pigeons and creoles do have colloquialisms like expressions. Like we learned a little bit about Chinese chung yus or, you know, expressions or like cat got your tongue or, you know, you look as nervous as a long tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs. I just kind of want to talk about like the pronunciation that she mentions here. And she refers to it as Black English. This was before the term Ebonics or Ave or African American Vernacular English were popularized in um, modern day uh, linguistics. But she lists some, some um, get down on pronunciation. So pronounce the words. She gives you a nice appendix here of the words in correct Black English. Tooth, sore, desks, this, dead, self, insurance, king, rest, and tour. It's kind of interesting because I don't, I don't think I've ever noticed that there are very specific words when I'm using African American vernacular English are said differently. I kind of want to see the way that she would have said it. So it's like in chapter two, use the rule from chapter two to govern the pronunciation. And she kind of, I want to go back here and look at some more of her examples in chapter two. So here are her examples. Um, so it would have been tooth, so, desis, desis, dis, they, seth, insurance, kang. I don't know how I feel about some, some of that. I don't know. Like, well, it could be regional. It really could be regional, even though this is actually from Wayne State University Press. So the author, um, I'd love to do more research on Geneva, uh, Geneva Smitherman to kind of find out where she was from regionally. Um, but comment below, you know, for, for those of us who speak African-American vernacular English and, you know, tell me what you think. Um, but there was there was another example that she kind of included in this you know text on this. Um, she kind of talked about a, a third a third person plural pronoun. 
So, okay, for example, the expressway bought they house. They should do it by themselves. So, for example, you know, in standard American English, you know, there are pronoun systems and you would use them in certain ways like but then there's the third person plural pronoun they that serves for the subject possessive and so-called reflexive as in you know the example i just used here or in the case of the third person a singular pronoun he she uses an example he did it all by himself then an earlier stage of development of african-american vernacular english meaning like you know probably prior to the 19th and 20th centuries he book for for his book and she house for her house were prominent and then those have gradually disappeared like it can be used to introduce statements such as it's four boys and two girls in the family and it was a man had died so i do know those ones those ones are fairly common as opposed to saying something like there are four boys in two girls in his family or there was a man who had died so you know it's four boys and girls in his family um it was a man who had died um and these patterns you know they kind of may require a filler word in the statements and the filler is an empty is empty in a semantic sense yeah this is this is really fascinating all right so i, I love to see some more examples of the third person plural pronoun all right so you know they they essentially have a lot of really great examples of you know an adverbial demonstrative here or there plus go is used instead of there here um plus is are for example there go my brother in the first row and here go my mama right here so these are definitely um great examples of the adverbial demonstrative uh, and so you know we'll stop here for now because these were a great couple of examples of you know other aspects of african-american vernacular english and so i hope you have enjoyed the video and the examples so yes um this was one of the first books if you have any other books that sort of give examples of african-american vernacular english that are older and even new linguistic books that kind of break down um you know just on a semantics or you know linguistic perspective on how african-american vernacular english um does what it does i love learning and reading about you know something that i've used my whole life and um for some reason in society i think we are kind of taught to believe that African-American vernacular English is like bad grammar or it's speaking slang or, you know, whereas, you know, the author does use a lot of examples of like what some, some, well, at that time, what types of slang were, you know, black speech. And she, I'm using her words, black speech, um, because this was before, you know, the, the codification of, uh, you know, having the codified African-American vernacular English as a term. So, um, but yeah, so comment below if you know any other books on the topic and I'll be looking for them now, actually, um, you know, with the popularity of the African-American vernacular English video. I just kind of want to explore this topic a little bit more and to be able to, you know, really educate people on, you know, why African-American or uh, vernacular English or Ave does what it does and um, how my whole thing is I really want to be able to preserve this language um, and be the champion of it. So, all right, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and please share the videos. Tell your friends to subscribe to my channel if you like language content, if you like, you know, being involved civically in your community or, you know, community conversations and um, local politics, international politics, history, and then also sustainability and, you know, protecting the planet. So there'll be all sorts of uploads on those topics and um, professional and personal development. So, all right. Thanks and have a great one. Bye, everybody.